Welcome to End Times Prophecy News and my show, Brother Jim Beckwith reporting here. Uh, we have the biggest breaking news probably of in the last whole year or two. I think it's the most phenomenal news to take out the number one state sponsor of terror leader, Soleimani. Iran's Soleimani and Iraq's Muhandis killed in airstrike militia spokesman. Uh, we're going to be going over all the news in one video today. So this will be the hour of power, as Robert Schuller used to say. <laughs> Abu Mahdi al Muhandi is a commander in the popular mobilization forces, attends a funeral procession at Hash al Shabi, paramilitary forces. Members who were killed by U.S. airstrikes in Qom district at the Green Zone in Baghdad, Iraq, December 31st, 2019. What a beautiful uh, New Year's um, gift to Iran. And the people of Iran are celebrating on Twitter big time. This man who has killed so many people, this is Abu Mahadi, but I'm speaking of Qasim Soleimani, mainly. The head of the elite Quds Force and Iraqi military commander Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis were both killed late on Thursday in an airstrike on their convoy in Baghdad airport, an Iraqi milit militia spokesman told Reuters. Uh, now, this was done by a drone and it was ordered by Donald Trump. That's right. After their veiled threat, their threat to to say that we are no longer a force in the uh, Middle East against Iran. What a wonderful day it is. The American and Israeli enemy, he says, is responsible for killing the Muhajideen Abu Mahdi Al-Mahandis and Soleimani said Ahmed Al-Assadi, a spokesman for Iraq's popular mobilization forces umbrella grouping of Iran-backed militias. So what did Rose McGowan, head of of um, the Hollywood, uh, I forgot what they call that, the Hollywood, uh, uh, for those who are trying to expose all the rapists in Hollywood, yeah, I forgot what she's called, but look what happened to her. She got her call, cut all her hair off. She looks like a dude now. Dear Iran, the USA has disrespected your country, your flag, your people. 52% of US of us humbly apologize. We want peace with your nation. We are being held hostage by a terrorist regime. Uh, she was part of the hashtag... Uh, I forgot what they call that, uh, but, you know, uh, movement. Rose McGowan is the woman who claims she was raped by Harvey Weinstein. The alleged rape happened since during Sundance in 1997. Oh, that's right. The hashtag Me Too movement. That's right. Yeah. And that what a farce that turned out to be. So what happened to Rose McGowan? She cut all her hair off to look like a man. And was she really your buddy to get rid of the rapists in Hollywood? Of course not. She's showing her true colors here, isn't she? New York Times, another Muslim propaganda machine. Reporter shares video of General Soleimani reciting poetry recently killed in Baghdad. Drone strike ordered by Trump. The White House said Donald Trump ordered an airstrike on killed Iranian General Qasim Soleimani in Baghdad in the early hours of Friday, while the New York Times Muslim propaganda machine shares this video. <laughs> I'm a man of love. Oh, how sweet. What a wonderful spiritual man he was. Redditors think Soleimani would still be alive if New York Times didn't have paywalled it up. Redditors pulled up an article dated the same day Iran General Qasim Soleimani was killed warning about hypersonic missiles. The New York Times writer came up with a likely scenario when these missiles could be used on Soleimani. 
No existing defenses can stop such weapons, which is why everyone wants them. And then there's Pelosi. What does she have to say? She wants details from Trump after U.S. kills Iranian commander. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is calling on the Trump administration to immediately brief lawmakers on the U.S. airstrike that killed a top Iranian commander in Iraq and that the White House plans to do and what the White House plans to do next so we can warn our Muslim buddies in the Democrat global cabal. Uh, no, that's not going to work. He's not going to let you know a thing. The strike in Iraq was directed by President Donald Trump and killed Qasem Soleimani, the commander of the Iran's secretive Quds Force. But we want him to live on. You ruined it. And why? Because why did Trump do this? Not just to show force and power by c killing the highest legal by the UN, the generals of another army. Uh, because they were actually going to do a coup d'etat and arrest President Saleh of Iraq. That's right. They were going to overthrow Iraq and make Iran and Iraq as one. So Trump says, oh, that's not going to happen. We're going to just put an end to this. But Adam Schiff says Soleimani was responsible for unthinkable violence and world is better off without him. But Congress didn't authorize, and American people don't want a war with Iran. All steps must now be taken to protect our forces against the almost inevitable escalation and increased risk. That's the best Adam Schiff pencil neck head can do, huh? What, what would you expect? The U.S. act of international terrorism targeting and assassinating General Soleimani from Javad Zarif. The most effective force fighting Daesh, Daesh, ISIS, Al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda, et al. is extremely dangerous and a foolish escalation. The U.S. bears responsibility for all consequences. Muslim propaganda from Javad Zarif. Are you actually trying to say the number one state sponsor of terror was fighting Daesh, which is ISIS? Are you serious? <laughs> And Senator Mitt Romney, a rhino, Qasim Soleimani was depraved terrorist who had the blood of hundreds of American servicemen and women on his hands and who was doubtlessly planning operations to further harm our citizens and allies. Elizabeth Warren says Soleimani was a murderer responsible for the deaths of thousands, including hundreds of Americans. But this reckless move escalates the situation with Iran. We're scared of Iran because we gave them $150 billion through Obama and increases the likelihood of more deaths and new Middle East conflict. Our priority must be avoided to, to avoid another costly war. Costly? Are you serious? You give $150 billion to, to Iran, and then you talk about the cost of going to war against stopping their terrorism? That's just like you pretending you are a native Indian with your high cheekbones. Bernie Sanders, when I voted against the war in Iraq in 2002, I feared it would lead to greater destabilization of the region. That fear unfortunately turned out to be true. The U.S. has lost approximately 4,500 brave troops. Tens of thousands have been wounded and we spent trillions. I guess he's totally detracting from the truth. The same thing he did was detracting from the truth of never getting a job until he was 40 years old and living off of mama and daddy. That's true. Bernie Sanders never got a job till he was 40 years old. What a loser. Cory Booker, we have a president who has no strategic plan when it comes to surgical strikes on terrible leaders like Soleimani when it comes to Iran and has only made that region less stable and less safe. Really? Is that why Iran and Iraq are thanking him? Is that why President Saleh of Iraq is loving on Trump? Is that why Vladimir Putin just thanked Donald Trump again for something else? Oh, we got all kinds of good news coming up, folks. Let's move on. FBI records indicate DOJ considering prosecuting Andrew McCabe over leaks now. It's time for the orange jacket.
you think? New records from the Justice Department watchdog's investigation into Andrew McCabe point to a possible criminal prosecution of the fired FBI deputy director. The dozens of pages of previously secret documents detail the FBI's internal inquiry into the bureau's then no. The records were released in response to a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit brought by Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, a left-leaning watchdog group that has been fighting in court for access to the DOJ and FBI documents connected to McCabe's firing. DOJ Inspector General Michael Horowitz released a report detailing multiple instances where McCabe lacked candor with FBI Director James Comey, FBI investigators and Inspector General investigators about his authorization to leak to the Wall Street Journal sensitive information revealing the existence of an FBI investigation into Clinton's emails and the Clinton Foundation. Oh, I thought this one was funny. Audience member to warrant, will you support a universal concealed carry law for everyone in the country who's willing to be licensed and checked by the government? She says, no. I want all your guns taken away. And when those, when those murders, when those thieves, when those Muslims come to cut your head off, you will have no way to protect yourself. You can use a knife though. Rots of ruck. Oh, and then we have Gateway Pundit. Oh, there's all kind of, this is all one news segment, folks. So hold on. Oops, we're having problems here, Houston. Okay. Uh, again, Iranian leaders are now vowing vengeance on General Soleimani's killers. You knew this was coming, though. Earlier on Thursday, the United States killed General Qasim Soleimani, a top commander of Iran's Al-Quds force, in an airstrike at Baghdadi's or Baghdad's international airport. Yeah, let's not forget he also cured, uh, Trump also wiped out Bakr al-Baghdadi, huh? <laughs> the strike also killed Abu Mahdi al mohandi the deputy commander of Iran-backed militias known as the Popular Mobilization Forces. Seven people were reportedly killed in the airstrike, meaning only four other assistants were killed. That's not surgical, right? By a drone? <laughs> of course it is. Iranian leader Ayatollah Saeed Ali Khomeini released a statement on Friday morning. You're going to love this. Leader of the Islamic Revolution Ayatollah Saeed Ali Khomeini says those who assassinated IRGC Quds Force Commander Major General Qasim Soleimani must await a harsh revenge. In a statement on Friday, Ayatollah Khomeini said the cruelest people on the earth assassinated the honorable commander who courageously fought for years against the evils and bandits of the world. His demise will not stop his mission, but the criminals who have the blood of General Soleimani and other martyrs of the Thursday night attack on their hands must await a harsh revenge, the leaders added. Martyr Soleimani is an international figure of the resistance and all the devotees of the resistance are now his avengers, Ayatollah Khomeini said. All the friends and foes must know that the path of jihad of the resistance will continue with double motivation and a definite victory awaits those who fight in the auspicious path, the leader said. The demise of our selfless and dear general is bitter, but the continued fight and achievement of the final victory will make life bitterer for the murderers and criminals he added. In his statement, the leader also offered condolences to the Iranian nation and General Soleimani's family and declared three days of national mourning. Oh, is this Jesus Christ who went to the grave and was ascended after three days? Yes, that's what we're trying to make it, huh? Following the leader's remarks, Defense Minister Brigadier General Amir Hatami also vowed that revenge will be taken against all those behind the assassination. Undoubtedly, the heinous crime, which is a strong proof of the evil nature of the big Satan U.S., the arrogant U.S. and its all-out support for terrorism in the region and Iraq will be responded to in a crushing way. The defense minister warned earlier former commander of the IRGC, Major General Mohsen Rezai, also vowed a harsh revenge against the perpetrators.
And here's the breaking report. Before U.S. drone strike, fears Soleimani was in Iraq to lead the coup, arrest President Saleh, and take over U.S. Embassy. A report by Al Hura reporter Stephen Nabil shows that sources close to the Iraqi government said to him hours before the U.S. attack that killed Iran Quds force leader Major Soleimani, uh, General Soleimani as he arrived at the Baghdad airport reportedly from Syria that there were fears in the Iraqi government that Soleimani was going to lead a coup and overthrow the government, arrest President Barham Saleh and take over the U.S. Embassy, but things didn't quite work out the way intended. Proof is his ring that he always wore. Soleimani before and after. What if the strikes were meant to stop a plan this morning? I was hearing from trusted sources close to the government leadership that they were worried of an Iranian-backed plan by the militias and Soleimani to seize power and arrest the president and declare a new Iraqi norm. We continue. 2020 starts with a bang and Dow goes up 330 points to an all-time high, up 57% since Donald Trump Cyrus has been elected. <whistles> greatest stock market rally ever in U.S. history continues and last year was the greatest rise in one year, over 5,000 points in one year ever in history, continuing to break records day after day after day. Fantastic. But we got to move on. Iranians celebrate thank President Trump for killing Soleimani using hashtag thanks POTUS for Soleimani. That guy uh, that has has tweeted that we see Iran responsible for events in Baghdad and we will respond to Iran. First, you can't do anything, Khomeini says. If you were logical, which you're not, you'd see that your crimes in Iraq, Afghanistan have made nations hate you. That's what Khomeini says about Trump. But Iranians responded. Thanks, Mr. Trump. Thanks, POTUS, for Soleimani. Yeah. Dear Mr. President, as an American Iranian woman, just wanted to say thank you. You are brave and courageous and intelligent as hell. Hashtag Trump 2020. I hope you see this message. Look at that one. And the best news I could have heard in 2020 is this. Thank you, Mr. Trump. I like seeing him dead with his hand, proving that he died. This person was the cause of death for more than thousands of people in Iran, says another person from Iran. I'm happy that Trump stuck to his word and did what he promised to. Now, didn't I say that when you, th when I ran, I, in my last report, I said, when, when uh, Iran tried to threaten Trump, I said, you want to go to war against Trump? He's going to crush you. Well, he did more than crush you. He always likes to save lives like God does. He took the head off the snake, didn't he? He sure did. Now that snake can't bite you. The best gift for us was killing a terrorist and commander of the Islamic Republic, says another Iranian. Another Iranian says, from all Syrians who have been displaced, from all Iraqis who have been injured, from all Iranians who have seen their dearest fall by the regime. Thanks, POTUS, for Salami. He killed, danced on the blood, and people mourn. He didn't know the earth spins until it become his turn. Now he is in hell and we people are dancing. Worse than being killed is when the world is happy from your death. I am from Iran and I want to say thank you, President Donald Trump, for Salami's death or Soleimani's death. I still can't believe this MFers are gone, but thanks anyway, Uncle Trump. Thanks for killing one of the bloodthirsty commanders of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps of Iran. Samar says, as an Iranian with all my heart, I thank you, Mr. President. And the list goes on and on and on, folks. I'm telling you, th this is just, this just came in last night. It's probably th hundreds of thousands of tweets going across thanking Trump because they don't really hate Trump. They love Trump, don't they? And Trump has responded to Iran and their ruthless regime. And what does Trump say to Khomeini? He says, never. Now, Khomeini just threatened him again. 
with the other major generals, right? And Trump just said this morning, never ever threaten the United States again or you will suffer consequences. Flashback, President Trump warned Iranian regime on their threats against US. Hmm, let's see. So what Trump is saying is, he didn't say never ever do another strike on us, just threaten me and see what happens. I wonder how many new uh, Muslim generals to start their uh, to continue their caliphate in Iran and and uh, terrorism across the world are ready to jump up to be taken out by another drone strike. <laughs> Keep on laughing there, Soleimani. I bet you're not laughing at right now as the pits of hell you have been sent to. On July 22nd, 2018, President Trump warned the brutal Iranian regime to Iranian President Rouhani, never ever threaten the United States ever again or you will suffer consequences the likes of which throughout history have ever suffered before. We are no longer a country that will stand for your demented words of violence and death. Be cautious. Oh, for some reason, Trump put them all in capitals like God's word says the king of kings, the lord of lords, all in seven words, pure capitals. Revelation 19, I believe it's verse 16. I'm not sure. It's just amazing, isn't it? We got more news, folks, uh, from I got to share this with you before we head off. Germany, Britain, China urge a de-escalation after U.S. strikes offer condolences. Countries heavily involved in the Middle East reacted to the United States taking out top Iranian General Qasem Soleimani, including China, Russia, and Germany. Britain Foreign Minister Dominique Raab Ryab urged all parties to de-escalate, adding that further conflict is none of our interests. I wonder why. <laughs> the reason why is because no one can stand against one man named Cyrus, who is now called Trump, because Cyrus in the spirit has come back. A Persian Babylonian king who has come back God is working through his servant, Isaiah 45. And what is happening? God says, all I need is one man and I will change the world. You can bring your hundreds of thousands of other leaders against him, but he will change the world because I don't need even a man, but I will use one man to do my job. Just like I used one man, Moses, to do my job and deliver the children of Israel out of the hands of the Pharaoh of Egypt. Ulrich Demmer, a German government spokesman, said the United States was just reacting to Iranian provocations. The American action was a reaction to a series of military provocations for which Iran is responsible, she told reporters at a press conference. We also see with great concern Iran's activities in the region. We stand before a dangerous escalation, she added. Germany will try to de-escalate the situation, she said. Let me tell you something. When Trump's going to continue to do these surgical strikes and put the fear of God in these Muslim radical generals, not the lower people, not the people who vote for these people, because Cyrus doesn't want innocent people dead. He doesn't want even the poor people dead. He just wants to take out the head of the snake and he will be looked upon as the greatest leader far above Abraham Lincoln or John F. Kennedy, who were both great presidents. Another one, Trump, U.S. Embassy in Iraq safe following attack. This is a little bit older. This is right after the attack of the embassy. And what did Trump do? He brought in hundreds and hundreds of Marines, many hundreds. And all of a sudden, 
the Iranian-backed militia just ran off like scurried little uh, mice in a field. Oh, watch out! He's got the sniper gun out. He's gonna, he's gonna kill me. That's right. And then we have Trump ordered military attack on Iranian General Qasem Soleimani to protect U.S. personnel. The Department of Defense confirmed that the U.S. military killed the Iranian regime's top military general Qasem Soleimani or Soleimani at the direction of President Donald Trump. Soleimani, the head of Iran's elite Quds Force, was killed by a U.S. airstrike. Near Baghdad International Airport early Friday morning local time, the strikes came after reports that at least three Katyusha rockets were fired on an Iraqi military base housing coalition counterterrorism forces. Soleimani's death was confirmed by Iraqi TV, three Iraqi officials, and Iranian state TV. At the direction of the president of the U.S. military has taken the decisive defensive action to protect U.S. personnel abroad by killing Soleimani, the head of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps Quds Force, a U.S.-designated foreign terrorist organization, the Department of Defense said in a statement late Thursday. The department added that Soleimani was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats and service members in Iraq and throughout the region. Soleimani and his Quds Force were responsible for the deaths of hundreds of Americans and a coalition service members and the wounding of thousands more. The statement continues. I wonder what Hildebeest is going to say about this one. And then some more great news. Republican Senator announces plans to dismiss impeachment articles. This one's good. I'm telling you. Oh, uh, I'm not getting the rest of this. So, but anyway, I'll, I'll give you the lowdown on this. Senator Josh Harley, Hawley, a Republican of Missouri, announced late Thursday he plans to dismiss the two articles of impeachment that Hildebeest has said, and and he's and he is a former Attorney General of Missouri, and he says in a court of law, if you have no proof, and she's knows there is no proof and there's nothing whatsoever it is dismissed and so therefore we will move toward striking it down and ending the impeachment and he has every right in a court of law so nancy pelosi is now on notice more great news out of California as the devils are working, so are the good people. Over 200 lawmakers urged Supreme Court to reconsider Roe v. Wade or killing innocent babies. More than 200 lawmakers filed a brief to the Supreme Court arguing that the landmark abortion case of Roe v. Wade should be reconsidered because the right to abortion standard is unworkable. 39 Republican senators and 166 House Republicans suggested to the high court in an amicus brief in an upcoming abortion case that they should take up the issue of whether Roe v. Wade should be considered. The submission said the principles in the case contain ambiguity, and that's all I get to read because uh, I've used all my five of free, five free articles at Epic Epoch Times. And U.S. nationals warned not to travel to Iraq day before Iranian General Qasem Soleimani killed in U.S. airstrike. The writing was on the wall the day before. And if you don't understand that hail is coming down the size of softballs, well, you need to take, you know, even though you see it uh, and you're not smart enough to walk, uh, to stay out of outside you know and you need to be protected well we're we're here to warn you okay if you can't see it's obvious the u.s state department updated its travel warning for iraq advising americans against traveling to the region a day before president donald trump authorized strikes that killed the iranian regime's top military official see trump is all about protecting the people so that's all i have for you today fantastic news isn't it just amazing may the lord bless you and there might be some news coming out later but god is using his servant cyrus in amazing ways news is just flying out nowadays and he is rolling out the red carpet 
for his bride, his unspotted bride. He put the fear of God in the nations through Obama. He gave them a bit of the purifying through the fire. And now he says, those who want to continue to do that which is wicked and will not repent, I'm sorry, but you're going to be staying for the hour of uh, testing. As Revelation 3 verse 10 says, the seven years of great tribulation where there will be more that will be made white as Daniel 9 or Daniel chapter 11 says. And Revelation chapter 7 verse 14 says, they love not their lives unto death, Revelation 12, 11, and they made their robes white before the Lamb of God before, because they had a testimony of Jesus. There will be more great tribulation saints, but for right now, we have the rapture of the bride is about to be laid out. The red carpet from God Almighty for his beautiful bride is being laid out through Cyrus, a wonderful blessing for the body of Christ right before the rapture. Thank you for listening. May the Lord bless you.